Hi guys, it's Emily from Noble Novels and welcome to today's video. This is my this or that tag. It's a tag for people April. Yes, I know it's coming up at the end of May, but I always pre like sort out my videos like at least a month in advance. So Jack said I'm I'm keeping the people April theme going. And seeing as I'm tagging people at the end, I'm I think it counts. I think I'm gonna continue the people April love. Now, this is a tag that was created by Ros from Scully Dangley about the books and Elizabeth from Boo Kinder Books. I will link both their channels down below and I will link Ros's video, an official like one for this video with all the tags written down because you know I'm a bit lazy. I don't tend to write the prompts down unless it's for my tags and stuff, but sorry guys. But anyway, this is a nice short and sweet tag about non-fiction. I was just looking at my um, previous history, like my, my book journal about all the books I've read about non-fiction. I do tend to go with quite sort of similar non-fiction books. I'm not a massive non-fiction reader, like my sister from Charlie Brook, Charlie from Charlie Brook Reads. She reads a lot more non-fiction than me, but I am getting better at it. I am trying to look for non-fiction. In fact, my non-fiction shelf is getting more and more full by the day. The fact that I've got one book there that you will see on my book haul is a non-fiction book that I got sent to by a friend and I think I am trying to change I'm trying to read more non-fiction because I do find them very very informative anyway let's get on with the prompts so prompt number one big fat and detailed biographies or short and succinct biographies you guys know I'm not a massive fan of big books I do not like books that are going to take too long because I read so much, I prefer shorter, powerful, distinct novels where they get you and you don't want to put them down. I do read some big novels, like I read, um, for a tandem read-along, I read Normal Women by Philippa Gregory. And I found that very fascinating. That's probably the biggest non-fiction book I've read. And I've kept it because it's quite, um, it's very historical and it's very much my kind of jam. And it's talking about women and it's talking about history and it goes over a long period of time. But I did get sent that book by the publishers. So like like Roz, if I had to pay for a book that was that size, I don't know if I would because it is a very, very big book and it took a lot of work to actually read it. So in general, I do prefer short and succinct biographies, but there are some that I will read if they're big, but they're not really my jam. I much prefer sort of short and succinct ones. Number two. Celebrity memoirs or average Joe memoirs. Looking at my prompts, if it's books like written by people, I tend to prefer actually average Joe memoirs. And that you'll find when you see later prompts. I do read some celebrity memoirs, but I am very, very fussy because they have to be people that I really want to read about. There have been so many autobiographical memoirs that I've thought about with to how historical. But celebrities, as in celebrities, like people that are famous for thingies, I'm not as interested. I prefer things that, like average Joe, because you, have, you tend to relate to them more. Like the celebrity memoirs where they name drop all the flipping time does my absolute nut. I don't know why, it really, really does. I'm just not into that. I don't like like people name dropping, I don't like people going about their own fame. If it's a poor me, poor me storyline, celebrity memoir, nah, not for me. I much prefer average Joes, people that have worked hard for their, for their money. And that is, that's probably because of my class background. I much prefer people who based, uh, have, have normal lives and just make write books on that because they tend to be more interesting, to be honest. But there are some celebrity memoirs I like, and you'll see, like I said, you will see that later on. Point number three, collect complete correspondence or selected letters. I do like complete correspondence. I don't tend to like selected letters. The only one, the only book that I've read with selected letters has been the Charlotte Bronte ones or anything to do with the Brontes. They're the only selected letter memoirs that I've read because they're the only ones that really interest me. And they are, I guess, if you count them as celebrities, they're the most interesting in my eyes. And they're the only ones that I would read selected letters by. But in general, I do prefer complete correspondence because I don't like having to dip in and out. I don't find the letter format very interesting. It's not really my kind of style of reading for, for memoirs. I prefer complete correspondence. But, like I said, I have to have an but. 
I did like the selected letters of Charlotte Bronte selected letters that was written by Elizabeth Gaskell. I think for me, if you're a Bronte lover, that was really interesting. I really, really loved that. Prompt number four, memoirs written when events are fresh or memoirs written with hindsight. That's obvious for me, memoirs written with hindsight, because pr pretty much most of my non-fiction books are historical non-fiction books. Books set either in the wartime, um, obviously Tudor period, historical non-fiction is my, really is my interest to me. Natalie Haynes writes amazing historical non-fiction, Philippa Gregory, Alison Weir, not Philippa Gregory so much, Alison Weir writes amazing non-fiction um, historical events. Like I said, Natalie Haynes, I'm really getting into the Greek non-fiction. There, I find that fascinating. Wartime books, but books written before I was born, books set in London, because that was where my mum was from. Um, again, I've got real like love for books like that, but I do love historical. Books written fresh, because I think, because of the fact that I'm a massive historical fiction lover, I like to look back and I find you can't always judge things straight away. Like events have to be happening for a while to look back. Hindsight is an amazing thing because hindsight can give us so much knowledge because it's when you think of events and you think about what has happened, you can really justify it and like make sense of it and things like that. For me, that's really fascinating. I love hindsight. I love historical fiction. That's where it, when I'm in first books, I will go for historical fiction, non-fiction. Non historical non-fiction rather than current normally. Diary of, diaries of ordinary life or diaries of extraordinary events again. Sometimes ordinary life ones do interest me but extraordinary events like ones that were written like the Titanic, ones that were written wartime, um, Auschwitz ones, I do tend to go for a bit of like the Auschwitz and the historical fiction. They destroy me, they absolutely destroy me but I find them interesting. There are some with ordinary life um, like I was saying, I am really have a contradiction in terms, I say about the fact that I don't like average Joes, but average Joes that are written at a time when things are happening can be quite good because they're quite inspirational and I like inspirational writing, which I think, yeah, is another prompt in a minute. The next prompt is number seven, arty memoirs or sporting memoirs. I'm being honest, I'm not really interested in either of those. I don't like artiness. Sporting, I guess, because there are certain sports I like, like I do, I'm getting more into football because of Thomas and I do like a bit of snooker because of Chris. So if it was those, possibly that might kind of, I really want to read like Fern Brady's book. I want to read, I want to read some other books like that, but not arty. God, no, I'm not arty at all. No, 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 not me at all. Prompt number eight, gritty autobiography writing or inspirational autobiography writing? Inspirational all the way. I like hope. I like books that, in non-fiction books, that give you something that you can give back. So if I was to ever write a book myself, it would I would hope to go down the inspirational line because I think to inspire another person is a gift. It's a truly tre big treasure and I think they can give you hope and they you can learn things. And I think learning is something, even in, I'm in my mid-40s now and I love to learn. I love to get ideas from other people. I love inspiration. It's my thing. I really, really love it the end now god this is a nice short but video prompt number nine biographies of historical fiction figures or biography of contemporary figures like i said historical figures all the way i love history yes i know i read a lot of contemporaries as well but history is where i learn from history is where you is what builds us it's what what has created us it's without history we wouldn't be anywhere so history all the way um contemporary figures yeah they're, they're okay if i pick them up on an audio book maybe there are some like i think with the contemporary figures it would probably be like disability ones if i was ever to do a, a, a contemporary figure i would want to do ones with disability rep and things like that because that's my kind of thing like because obviously disability is something I, else i shout out so if it's contemporary figures that are related to disability i've read some books by Estelle or something or another, I can't remember her name, Ileana or something. I've read some disabled memoirs and I think they're really fascinating. Sitting Pretty, that was a, that was a contemporary figure and that was a, like a, that was a biography, I think, partly biography. And that was quite a bit interesting and that was recent and I read that for um, the Spoonies. 
but in general yeah it's historical fiction all the way i love 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 it i love it my favorite probably one of my favorite ones is the brontes ones but i've read other historical fiction memoirs biographies that have just intrigued me and i love them and lastly memoirs of happy days or memories of tragic days a bit of both i can't i can't answer that Happy days don't interest me slightly as much as tragic days, but then I like hope so. Again, I'm, I'm a contradiction in terms. I'm sorry, Roz, I am a total contradiction. I do tend to like the tragic days stuff because obviously, again, I read the wartime ones, I read the historic, I read the Auschwitz ones, I read the ones set in Tudor time, I read the Greek ones, they're quite tragic. But occasionally you need to have a bit of happiness in the mix, but happiness doesn't always make the best. <laughs> I don't know, I have to be contradiction, don't I? Well, I'm going to tag three people. You don't have to do it. I just thought these are three channels that I do know read a bit of non-fiction. So I would like to know what they think of it. First one is Charlotte from Coiny Reads. She did a lovely shout out to me on one of her videos recently and has made me so bloody happy. I literally couldn't love her. I think she's absolutely amazing. Olivia from Olivia's Catastrophe. She's one of my booktube friends from like longest time. And I absolutely adore Olivia. And I know she reads some non-fiction. And then Chatty from The Mad Chatter. A great friend and i know she reads a lot of non-fiction as well so if you guys want to do it tag me down below if you want to do it anyway i've not tagged you please let me know if you got to the end of this video do a person emoji do one any of the people emojis if you like this video give it a thumbs up if you're new to my channel not subscribe ring on my ding and i'll see you all soon bye bye